Welcome to the Winning Edge Investments Podcast. Winning Edge Investments provides industry-leading horse racing and sports betting tips, ratings and education, enabling you to invest intelligently and treat your betting like a business. Go to www.winningedgeinvestments.com to learn more about how you can start to supercharge your betting bank immediately. Treat your betting like a business and invest intelligently with Winning Edge Investments. Winning Edge Investments, start betting like a professional. Dean Evans joins us to go through the Group 1s now in Sydney tomorrow afternoon. G'day, Dino. G'day, Gareth. How are you going? I am very well, mate. Let's start with the Australian Oaks, which is the first of the Group 1s there at Royal Randwick tomorrow. And um, can't wait for this clash. This should be a beauty. We've got Orchestral that's at $1.65. Um, she dominates the market at the moment. Then we go down to Sardozzi, who's next best there with Bet365 at around $3, I should say $4.50. And then a uh, horse like Sardozzi, four sixty. dollars Angel, $7. dollars 2 de la Vida at $10. And then Quintessa at fifteen dollars. Yeah, look, a, a good race there. Um, the Oaks often is a race where the, the, the horses in the market do well. Nine of the last uh, twelve winners have sort of been the first or second favourite, and not a lot of speed this year. And got maybe Bush Girl setting the tempo and sort of dances with hooves and Lord of the Angel up there. Um, you get sort of Quintessa Orchestral and, and Tudor Levita taking handy positions. Orchestra was obviously the superstar Philly, been incredibly impressive winning the Karaka Millions, Evandale Guineas, the, the Derby, um, and she was pretty good winning the binary up a, up a slow tempo. Um, I think the key danger to her is certainly the Dozy won the Edward Manifold and the VRC Oaks, very impressively last prep, had, had a much quicker time in sectionals and winning the um, and winning the, the VRC Oaks than, than Riff Rocket uh, when it won the Derby and obviously came out and won the ATC Derby. Uh, she was very impressive winning the far lap first up, um, and I thought she was a good third to orchestral love, uh, but, you know, there was that very slow speed up front. Um, her sectionals were as good as sort of orchestral, up 2,400 metres suits. Um, I thought the other one who could um, run a bit of a race was Quintessa, who's you know, hit the line well for fourth in the Elsa Guineas, and then the second, the Alistair Clark. The only horse who's come from the Alistair Clark in the last 12 years to run the ATC Oaks was Old Patroness, who won by two and a half lengths in 2022. It's, um, you know, it's definitely a clash here between, I think, Orchestral and Zardozzi. Um, and I think if there's any chimps in Orchestral's um, armour, uh, particularly given, um, you know, she's coming into this uh, you know, seventh round of prep, then, uh, you know, I think is the one to come on her down. What about Circle of Fire in the Sydney Cup? Um, he's at $5, Ashran at $7.00. Athabascan, Johnny O'Shea gave a, a wonderful push for his day yesterday on Giddy Up Stable Mail at 8.50. Calipur, the Group 1 winner there the other day in the Tancred at $8.50. A maid at 11 Serpentine at $12. Stable Mate Military Mission at 15 Glentanius at 16 Manzois at $17. Who wins the Sydney Cup, mate? Yeah, look, there's an above average speed here. Major Beal and Serpentine will push to the lead. Sort of Calipore, Torrens and Military Mission um, are likely to be reasonably forward. Um, the Circle of Fire, the, uh, the chairman has produced sort of five winners in the last 12 years, so that's been um, a good lead up. Um, but I think that was a very weak addition. Uh, he's drawn wide, um, which even for a race like the. Uh, um, the Sydney Cup there hasn't been a winner in the last 12 years and drawn wider than 13. Um, and four-year-olds actually have a, have a, a poor record in this race. There hasn't been a four-year-old winner um, in the last 12 years um, with pretty much uh, all the winners coming between five and, and seven-year-olds. So I think I think um, Shekla Fire is a bit of a false favourite. I thought Ash run, you know, he was second in the Geelong Cup, fourth in the Melbourne Cup last, probably won the Packingham Cup really comfortably, um, and then came around a good third in the tank. I think Ashland's a really big chance. Uh, Mirajan, uh, the Kiwi, the two starts over two miles, the two wins, won an Auckland Cup last start and a New Zealand Cup. Um, and I think, uh, you know, in a race where Tony doesn't have a query over two miles, he's, he's going to be very strong again. Um, and military mission uh, is, is the class stayer. 
Um, you know, he, he won a Newcastle Cup and Herbert Power and Zipping Classic, classic last prep. He was a good fifth in the round, but when it was probably ridden upside down. And then again in the tank when, when um, you know, he get ridden upside down to lead. Um, it was being six. I think I think from the wider gate, they're going to ride him colder, uh, which more suits his style. And so um, keen on Ash Run at the price uh, as the main bet, but I, I think it had nice double-figure odds. Mirage on and military mission. Um, definitely strong chances in this race. Yeah, I agree with you with Ash Run. I think he'd be mighty hard to beat in the Sydney Cup. What about the Queen Elizabeth? Fia Sistina at 2.20. Pride of Jenny at 4.20. Cascadian at 9. Mr Brightside at 10. Place to Carousel at 11. And then Charles Wolf at $13. Fascinating race. Three different form lines to take in consideration. You've got the the, the Derby with Charles Wolf. You've got the Australian Cup slash all-star mile with pride of Jenny Cascadia and Mr. Brightside. And then you have the um, group one featured there, the Tancred, wasn't it? V. Sistina and Place to Carousel, the two imports. So which way are you going here, mate? Yeah, I think the, <clears throat> the fascinating element of this race is just the, the difference in the race shapes. Um, the, the, the all-star mile and the Australian Cup that, you know, Cascadia and Mr. Brightside and Pride of Genial came out of. They ran 21 lengths um, quicker than standard for the first sectional in the uh, in the All-Star Mile and 15 lengths quicker than standard for the, the first half um, in the Australian Cup. And overall, they ran plus 17.5 and plus 6 for those two races. Um, conversely, the, the horses coming out of the round at uh, Via Sistina and Plus to Carousel, they ran 27 lengths lower than standard mm. for the first half. Um, and then seven lengths quicker than standard for the second half, but they were minus 19 lengths overall that time to standard um, in the round. It. So you've got this horse, you know, Villa Sistina, who that was a very impressive one, pretty much untouched, um, you know, coming off the, the plane first up uh, from overseas and then winning, but running 19 lengths lower than standard. Uh, and then you've got these rock hard horses, you know, Pride of Jenny and Cascading have been running sort of. 17 lengths and six lengths above standard and these strong races and, and coming into it. So, you know, like you said, Gareth, very interesting different form lines. Um, for me, I, I think BS is a very impressive horse. Um, it, we just don't know how good she is, but she couldn't have done more than just winning very easily um, in that run. But, you know, I, I was very keen on cascading the Australian Cup and I just don't see any reason he can't repeat here. He's, he's, he's got the exact same race shape with Pride of Jenny, you know, again, trying to run them into the ground. I think Lindemann will be there to add pressure at some point. Um, you know, Chow Wolf will probably come up a bit to try to utilise his, his weight and, and Zayrak. Um, and so I think there'll be a decent tempo here. It's certainly not going to be anything like um, like the round where they, they walk up front. Um, and so, you know, I still think Cascadian's just flying and they ran better closing sectionals than Mr. Brightside in the, um, the all time mile and flew home to win the Australian Cup and... He's just flying. He likes to cut out of the ground. She'll get a round look. Um, runs a strong 2,000. I just think of the prices. I'm, I'm keen again on Cascadian. Um, I think you can just save on Via Sistina, who's obviously the one who could just jump out of the box and be our, our wait for age star for a long time. Um, but for me, they're, they're probably the two players and probably the only other horses who can win a, a plastic carousel who ran second to Via Sistina. And he's probably going to appreciate a stronger tempo being a 2,400-metre horse, and, and then part of Jenny, obviously, if she uh, gets her own way up front, is going to run another big race. Yeah, it's going to be a great race, the Queen Elizabeth. Can't <laughs> wait for it. And then we've got the Queen of the Turf. So you got just the 380 with bet 365. A tissue has been saved for this race or decided to go to the Queen of the Turf so she can defend his title instead of the Queen Elizabeth. She's at $5. Tropical Squall at $7. Alentia at $8. Now, Samana is in great form at $11. Macarena at $13. Ruthless Dame at $17. And then Camper and Essa is at $19. Big prices for the rest here, Dino. Yeah, and it's actually been a race where big price horses have, have done very well. In fact, um, in the last 12 years, the, the first and second favourites have, um, have only won one race. Um, so it's, it really has been a race for, for runners at, at big odds. Um, and trying to narrow it down, is quite interesting, is um, over the last 10 years, uh, nine of the ten winners rather off a seven or fourteen day break. They tend over this, you know, tough mile for the, the fillies and mares to struggle, even off a three week break, let alone a four week break. 
And we've got our favourite Zucotcha coming off a four-week break as well as others in the market like uh, Samana and, and Tropical Squall. Uh, another thing, nine of the winners have drawn uh, between barriers one and eight. Um, and again, it's tough from those really wide barriers, nine plus only one winner. Um, and again, also in the market, like sort of Campion Esther and um, Alentia, um, uh, uh, you know, drawn wide. Um, I think a tissue really stands out for me, even though horses in the market don't have a great record in this race. She won this race last year in Dominant Fashion, second in the Empire Rose, won the McKinnon, won the Blamey. And third in the Australian Cup, obviously, to Cascade in a part of Jenny. Well, that's just the absolute grade A, A1 form. Um, so I think a tissue really, really is the one to beat. Um, I think some of the others just they're, they're either coming off sort of a three or four week break or they're, they're drawn wide. Um, and so the other one that sort of uh, from a profile and perspective really stood out was, was Alentia. Um, it just absolutely bolted into an emancipation by 2.8 lengths. Her sectionals were, were unbelievable. Eight lengths uh, above standard for the last six times. She ran a quick last 400 and last 200 um, of the entire day. Um, and that was a day that had, you know, orchestral and, and the tancred and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, she just she maps nicely. She's flying. Um, and uh, and so I think she gets to be a strong chance too, but very, very keen on a tissue with the class in the air with, with the lenty of the danger. Can't wait for it, mate. Day two of the championships. Love your insights. And if you're listening um, this morning and you want to be involved with Witty Edge Investments, all you need to do is go to Winning Edge Investments. You type in SEN and you get a lifetime discount of 25%. Is that right? That's right. Beautiful. That's all we need to know. Hey, Dino, you go and get them this week, mate. We appreciate your time. Yeah, cheers, Gary. Good luck to everyone. There's Dean Evans there. Thanks to winningedgeinvestments.com. Tips and ratings from professional punters on horse racing and footy. At Winning Edge Investments, our team of highly skilled expert analysts and full-time professional punters review the data, crunch the figures, assess the best betting opportunities, and deliver them to your phone via our app and your email inbox in real time so you profit. Go to www.winningedgeinvestments.com. Look at our membership options, make your choice, and enter the promo code PODCAST to receive a special 25% discount on your first membership just for listening. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T in capital letters for a 25% ongoing discount on your first membership. Treat your betting like a business and invest intelligently with Winning Edge Investments.